Our text today is the third chapter of the book of Habakkuk. We shall read it from the New International Translation, and therefore we're going to read it uh, from the monitors. Amen. We'll read it from the NIV. So we encourage you to read it from the monitors with us. Amen. We're going to read the whole chapter uh, because it's very important. Amen. Let us stand. Now, there's a term, on shigi onoth, which is a musical term because this chapter from the book of Habakkuk became a song that was sung uh, in the temple in Israel. And so there are musical notations. When we're reading the scriptures, we do not read musical notations, okay? Amen. You'll read the Psalms and it'll say something like Selah which simply means pause, but we don't read the word selah, amen. The musical t notations in the text we won't read. And so here's a musical text, a musical notation. At the end of the chapter, there'll be another musical notation. We don't read the musical notations, okay? Uh, if you don't know, I want you to act like you know <laughs> how to read the Bible. Together, a prayer of Habakkuk the prophet. Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, Lord. Repeat them in our day. In our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. God came from Teman, the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens and his praise filled the earth. His splendor was like the sunrise, rays flashed from his hand where his power was hidden. Plague went before him, pestilence followed his steps. He stood and shook the earth. He looked and made the nations tremble. The ancient mountains crumble and the age old hills collapse but he marches on forever. I saw the tents of Cushion in distress, the dwellings of Midian in anguish. Were you angry with the rivers, Lord? Was your wrath against the streams? Did you rage against the sea when you rode your horses and your chariots to victory? You uncovered your boat. You called for many arrows. You split the earth with rivers. The mountains saw you and writhed. Torrents of water swept by. The deep roared and lifted its waves on high. Sun and moon stood still in the heavens at the glint of your flying arrows, at the lightning of your flashing spear. In wrath you strode through the earth, and in anger you threshed the nations. You came out to deliver your people, to save your anointed one. You crushed the leader of the land of wickedness. You stripped him from head to foot. gloating as though about to devour the wretched who were in hiding. You trampled the sea with your horses, churning the great waters. I heard and my heart pounded. My lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept into my bones and my legs trembled. Yet I will wait patiently for the of calamity to come upon the nation invading us. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. 
I will be joyful in God my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. That's the last note, musical notation. We don't read that. Okay. God bless you. You may be seated. Verse 2. Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, Lord. Repeat them in our day. In our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. That's what I want to talk about this theme today. Remember mercy. When the nation was still dealing with the ravages and rampage of Harvey in Houston and Corpus Christi and all of those Gulf towns in Texas and Louisiana, before we could deal with that, Irma made her entrance on the stage. Another hurricane larger than the state of Texas itself. And all of the destruction in the Caribbean islands. And now as it makes its way up the coast of Florida, And even while we're dealing with Hurricane Irma, a hurricane so violently strong that they have no category to describe it. If a hurricane carries winds of 150 miles per hour, it is considered a stage five hurricane. But Irma packs winds of 185 to 200 miles per hour. And the scientists don't even have a category to describe it. And even as we speak in our sanctuary today, we know that there are people in Florida, in the Keys, in the islands of the Caribbean, who are in grave danger, even right now as we speak. Millions who are trying to flee danger have found themselves stranded on interstate highways because they've run out of gas and they have nowhere to go. Somebody ought to pray, Lord, in your wrath, please remember mercy. People are suffering. People are hurting. And God, we are pleading for mercy. Oh, if you're going to say amen today, I'm going to try to be as quick as possible. I want to give you three quick points, and I'm finished. Number one, remember our failure. You, you, you remember our failure. Harvey, Irma, Jose backstage waiting to make his entrance to do his damage. You, you, you first of all remember our complicity in what's going on. 
I know you're saying, Reverend, what do you mean? Our complicity. We don't have anything to do with the tornadoes or the hurricanes or the tsunamis, but I beg to differ with you. When you go back to read the prophet Habakkuk, he begins in chapter 1 calling out the corruption and the greed and the oppression and the evil of his own people. And he's calling God to be a God of wrath, to come down to Israel and wipe out all of the evil people for the evil that they have done. And here you sit today and you say you had nothing to do with the hurricane, but you did. We are all complicit in these hurricanes. What we are watching is the effects of global warming which not only means that the earth is heating up, but it also means that because the earth is heating up, it is causing chaos in nature. A hurricane is morally benign. It's not evil, it's just a hurricane. It may bring death and destruction, but a hurricane is just a force of nature following the laws of science which God has established. Remember the old proverbial story of the man who found the snake on the side of the road? The snake was almost dead and the man felt mercy for it. And so he picked the snake up and nursed it back to health and fed it and got it strong again. And when he did, the snake bit him. The man said, but I fed you and I healed you and I, I brought you back to health. Why would you bite me? And the snake said, you knew I was a snake when you picked me up. <laughs> Why? Because that's what snakes do. It's their nature. Animals have no moral consciousness. That's why these people who talk about they got a tiger for a pet are crazy. Or a lion for a pet. They get them when they cubs. They seem so sweet and nice. But cubs eventually grow up to be fully mature lions and tigers. They are morally benign. They have no moral category. If they bite you, that's what they do. That is their nature. Hurricanes is a natural force. But we are the reason that we are seeing now hurricane after hurricane after hurricane. When in American history have we seen three hurricanes in a row? And I know that the man who sits in the White House tells you there is no global warming. He wants to tell you that and he wants to strip away the regulations that President Obama put in place. He pulled out of the Paris conference so that he and his cronies can be free in their greed to pursue wealth. They don't care about people. They don't care about polluting the air. They don't care about contaminating the water. They don't care about the health of our people. All they care about is the bottom line of their money. And because of this modern, industrial, technological world in which we live, we have sent so much emissions into the atmosphere that we eroded the ozone layer which protected the earth from the rays of the sun. Now the sun is beating down on the earth and the glaciers in the north are melting and the sea levels are rising. God didn't do that. We did that. Habakkuk say, look at what we have done. Oh, you know, some of you, uh, some of you New Jacks don't remember this, but the old heads will remember a group back in the day called Tower of Power. Anybody remember Tower of Power? Oh, yeah. They had a song, the words of which I always remember that word said uh, 
I can't stand to see the slaughter, but I love to eat the meat. I can't stand dishonest people, but still sometimes I cheat. I can't stand this air pollution. And yet I drive a car. Maybe that's the reason why things are like they are. Let me ask you something. Uh, how many of you rode your bike here today? Just raise your hand. Yeah. Oh, you call that a bike? How many of us came in a car or by bus or by train? Then we are complicit in what is going on in our world. We're not riding bikes. We're driving cars that sends emissions into the air. And even though we've tried to limit those emissions, we're still polluting the earth. God told us, look, I'm putting you in charge of my creation. Watch over it. We have abused it. We have raped it. The scientists say that no, no, no hurricane can come north because the waters in the north are too cold to sustain or give life to a hurricane. But Sandy didn't get the memo. And if one hurricane has come already, then another one can come as well. Because the earth is heating up and it is getting warmer and warmer. And when the winds blow off the coast of Africa, today they have blown south to the Caribbean and to Florida. But one day they will come back to New York. This is why it is so important that we stay in the Paris Agreement, that we do everything individually to try to build a more economically, ecologically sustainable world. our complicity maybe that's the reason why remember our failure that we have been poor stewards of this world God has given us and yes we are responsible for this onslaught of hurricanes and next year and the year after will be worse and worse and worse and as Trump rolls back all of the regulations. We're going to see more and more and more contamination of the earth. Yeah. No, we're not innocent. We too are guilty. Yeah. But secondly, I want you to remember not only our failure, but this is what Habakkuk said, remember your failure, but in times of disaster, in times of calamity, when the hurricanes are raging, he said, secondly, remember your faith. So finally God shows up in chapter 2 and, and God says to Habakkuk, look, if you want me to bring down judgment upon the people of Israel, I'm going to raise up that great nation of Babylon and I'm going to bring Babylon in. Babylon is going to be worse than Harvey and Irma and Jose put together because Babylon swept down and destroyed every house, every church, every school, every home and even the people and the people who were left Babylon carried into slavery. That's what happened in Habakkuk's day. And Habakkuk, after he asked for wrath, then he told God, look God, how are you going to bring, bring Babylon to bring judgment? How are you going to bring a wicked people to bring judgment on your chosen people? God said to Habakkuk, look man, you can't tell me how to run my business. Don't you worry about Babylon. I'll take care care of Babylon but right now Lord have mercy I'm telling you I'm bringing judgment on the land there are earthquakes in Mexico and fires in California does somebody see what's going on the wrath of God is upon us because we have sinned against mother earth and we have sinned against our God and nature is revolting against it God, my God, my God, my God, 
God, have mercy, Lord. So after chapter 2, when God told Habakkuk, shut up, let me take care of my own business, Habakkuk said, well, Lord, there's only one thing I can do. I've heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, O Lord. Renew them in our day, in our time. Make them known in wrath. Remember mercy. You know, in times like these, saints, you better hold on to your faith. Oh, Lord, have mercy. In times like these, somebody needs to hold on to your faith. That, that's what Habakkuk said. Lord, I'm going to wait on you to take care of your business. I'm not worried about the hurricanes. I'm not worried about the storms. I know someone who speaks to the storms and can tell the winds to shut up and the billows to lie down. I know somebody, Lord have mercy, who watches over me and who walks with me. He is my strength, Habakkuk said. I am trusting in him. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. What? Your faith. When the storms of life are raging, tell him, Lord, stand by me. But thirdly and finally, as I rush to a close, remember our failure, our complicity. But secondly, remember our faith. Other folk don't know where to go and where to turn. But we got a God who is able. He is a God of justice. But he is also a God of love. He is God, a God of righteousness. But he is a God who imputes righteousness to his children. He is a God of awesome power. But he is also a God of kindness and compassion he's a God of holiness but thank God he's a God of forgiveness he is a God of wrath sometimes God gets tired of our mess he is a God of wrath he'll send the hurricanes and the tsunamis and the earthquakes but thanks be to God he's not just a God of wrath because when God's people pray, it touches the heart of God. He'll stay the hand of wrath and he'll send down mercy on his people. Somebody ought to remember mercy. There are those who are indifferent to God. Somebody ought to pray, Lord, remember mercy. There are some who don't believe in God. But somebody ought to pray, Lord, remember mercy. There are some that scoff at him and laugh at him and say that he doesn't exist. But you better pray, Lord, have mercy on these fools. Yes, Lord, we're praying for mercy. God, we have sinned against you. We have sinned against the earth. But we're asking you to give us a little mercy. Don't give us the hurricane. Don't give us death and destruction. That's what we deserve. But we're asking you to give us some mercy. Lord, we have praised you with our lips. But our hearts have been far from you. We are asking you to have mercy on us. We have put our faith in people instead of putting our faith in you. Lord, remember mercy. We have sought to build our own towers of Babel. We say, Lord, have mercy. We have loved materialism and things, and we've forgotten about you, God our Father. We're asking you this morning to have mercy upon us. We have worshiped riches instead of you. Lord, have mercy. We have oppressed 
the needy and give unto the greedy instead. Lord, have mercy upon us. We have exploited the poor nations of the earth, stealing their resources to satisfy our own national greed. Lord, have mercy. We've shot down black boys and black girls in the streets of our cities. Lord, have mercy. We pitted one race against the other race. We say, Lord, have mercy. We've been mean and unkind to the immigrants and the refugees right on our doorsteps. We took to want to take back the Dream Act and take back the possibility of helping our Mexican brothers and sisters. Somebody ought to pray. Lord, have mercy. We've been selfish, uh, thinking of our own selves uh, and not thinking of others. Uh, Lord, have mercy. We brought shame on your name, uh, even right here in the church, uh, when we've embraced those things uh, which are contrary to your will and to your word. Uh, somebody ought to pray. Uh, Lord, have mercy. We pimp prosperity from our pulpits, uh, telling people what their itching ears want to hear uh, instead of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, that the wages of sin is death uh, and the gift of God uh, is eternal life uh, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, somebody ought to pray, uh, Lord. Uh, have mercy. We've turned your house, the house of worship, the house of prayer, into an entertainment center. Somebody ought to pray. Lord, have mercy. We've forgotten about you. We've forgotten about your word. We've forgotten about your truth. Somebody ought to pray. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on me. I'm a sinner in need of salvation. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on Calvary Church. Have mercy on New York City. Have mercy on Donald Trump. Have mercy on the Republicans. Have mercy on the Democrats. Lord, have mercy. God, we need your mercy. Don't give us justice. Don't give us judgment. Don't give us wrath. Lord, we need mercy. We need grace. We need love. We need forgiveness. God, have mercy. When the storms of life are raging, oh, stand by me. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah, yes. Hallelujah, yes. Hallelujah, yes. Father, in your wrath, in your wrath, I know you're mad at us. We've forgotten about you. We stay at home on Sundays and won't even come to church to worship you. Father, we're asking you to have mercy. We know you're mad, but we're asking you, Father, God have mercy. Please have mercy. Your people are suffering. Your children are in trouble. Oh, have mercy. Have mercy on my soul. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? I love the Lord. He heard my cry and pitted every groan. Long as I live and troubles rise, I'll haste to his throne. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Oh, Lord. Look beyond our faults and see our needs. Yes. Ha. 
Hallelujah, yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus, yes. We're asking for mercy. Mercy for our children. Mercy for our family. Mercy for our country. Mercy. Oh God, we need mercy. Father, forgive us. Father, forgive us. We need mercy in Houston. We need mercy in Florida. We need mercy in the Caribbean. We need mercy in Cuba. We need mercy in the Bahamas. We need mercy all over America, all over this world. Father, have mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh God. We can't handle wrath. We can't handle judgment. Lord, we messed up. We've sinned against you. Oh God. Oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're his child. If you ask him for mercy, he'll give you mercy. If you ask him for grace, he'll give you grace. If you ask for forgiveness, he'll give you forgiveness. If you ask him for another chance, he'll give you another chance. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. 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 